Hi everyone, I am Dhruv Gupta, member of Corps IIT BHU and today I am going to give you an introduction to bitwise operators, bit masking and permutations. And also one more thing, the link to the doc here and also to the practice questions are given in the description below. So let us first start with the bitwise operators. First of all, we will understand what actually bitwise operators do. The bitwise operators takes two numbers as operands and does the bitwise operation on every bit of that two numbers. So the first bitwise operator that we are going to study today is the AND operator. The bitwise symbol for the AND operator is the ampersand. The result of the AND operator is 1 only if both the bits are 1. That is, if either of the bit is 0, the result will be 0. As you can see in the example here, the result of the AND operator of the two numbers is given here. If we take the two numbers from right to left as we proceed, the result of the AND operator will be as follows. 0 and 0 will give 0, 0 and 1 will give 0 as one of the bit is 0, 1 and 0 will give 1, will return 1 as both the bits are 1, 1 and 0 will give 0 and 1 and 1 will again give 1. So the answer of the AND operator is 101000. The second bitwise operator that we are going to study today is bitwise OR. And this straight line represents the bitwise symbol for bitwise OR. The result of the OR operator is 1 if any of the two bits is 1. As you can see in the example here, the bitwise OR of these two numbers is 111110. If we go from right to left, we will find 0 and 0 will return 0 as both the bits are 0. 0 and 1 will give 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 1 will give 1, 1 and 0 will give 1, 1 and 1 is 1. The third bitwise operator is the bitwise sort. And this power symbol is used to denote the bitwise sort. And it is one of the most important bitwise operator that you will use in future. The result of ZOR is 1 if the two bits are different. That is, if one bit is 1 and the other bit is 0, then the result will be 1. And if both the bits are same, that is either 0 or 1, the result will be 0. As we can see in the example here, 0 and 0 will return 0. 0 and 1 will give 1 as both the bits are different. 1, 0 again 1 because they are different. 1 and 1 will give 0 as both are same. 1 and 0 will give 1 and 1 and 1 will give 0 as both are same. The next operator is the left shift operator. The left shift operator shift the bits of the first operand and the second operand will determine the number of places to shift. As you can see in the example here, the this example shows that 1001 will have to shift its bit to left by the value of 1. So we shifted it the value of 1, so it will become 10010. Similarly, the right shift operator will also take two operands and it will right shift the bits of the first operand and the second operand will decide the number of places to shift. As you can see in the example, 1000 will be right shifted to one place right and will become 01 and 01. The left and the right shift operators are equivalent to the multiplication and division by 2 respectively. And one more important thing to be noted is that the left and the right shift operators will work only if the numbers are positive. As you can see, 1001 in decimal form will represent 9. And if it is shifted to left by the value of 1, it means it is multiplied by 2. So 9 into 2 will become 18 that is equivalent to 10010. Similarly, if 8 is shifted right to one place, then it will be, it is same as dividing it by 2. So 8 will become 4. Similarly, 1000, which is the binary representation of 8, will become 0101, which is the binary representation of 4. And the last bitwise operator that we are going to study today is the bitwise not operator. And this tilt represents the bitwise and it will take only one operand and it will invert all the bits of it. For example, it will make 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. So the bitwise note of 1100 will be 00110011. So the bitwise SOAR operator is actually, as I have said before, is the most useful operator from a technical interview perspective. So let us now solve a problem in which ZOR operator will be used. So the problem is given a set of numbers where all the elements occur even number of times except one number, we have to find that odd occurring number. So here I have taken an array whose values are 12, 12, 14, 90, 14, 14, 14. As you can see, 
12 occurs two times, 14 occurs four times, and only 90 occurs one time. So we have to design an algorithm that will return 90 as our output as we have to find the number which is occurring odd number of times. So first we have find the size of the array which is int n is equal to size of array divided by size of array 0. That is the size of whole array divided by the size of one integer. It will give us n the size of that array. Only 90 is the number that occurs one time which is an odd occurring element. So we have to design a function that will return 90 as the output. So I have designed a function find odd and there is a variable res is equal to 0. The res will be our final answer. So we will iterate through the array. We will take the ZOR of the, all the elements of the array. Since the elements which occur even number of times, the bits will occur even number of times. So the ZOR of that all bits will return 0. Only the bits that are in 90 and that are 1 will be 1 as all the other bits will occur even number of times and will get cancelled due to ZOR. So the output will be 90. As you can see in the output here, the output has the odd occurring element is 9. So we got our desired answer. So this was one of the practical use of the ZOR operators. So here are some questions for practice that you can use for practice after seeing this video. So I hope all of you must have understood what are actually bitwise operators. This was just an introduction to the bitwise operator. The second topic that I will be discussing today is bit masking. Now first of all understand what is bit masking. Bit masking is used to find all the subsets of an array. In this method, we create a one-to-one -one mapping between all subsets and the natural numbers. So first consider the first eight numbers and their binary representation is mentioned here. Now let us understand this through an example. First we will take an array and whose contents of the array is a, b, c. A is at position 1, B is at position 2 and C is at position 3. We will take only those elements of the array which occur at a position whose bits are set. That is, we will take only those elements which occur at a position whose bits are 1 and we will ignore those elements whose bits are 0. For example, consider a subset AC. Since A occur at position 1 and C occur at position 3, so the bitwise representation of the subset AC will be 1, 0, 1 that is 1, 0, 1. As we have taken only the first and the third element, so the bit of the first and the third element is 1 and the bit of the second element is 0. So let us take another bit number that is 110. Since the first and the second bit is 1, so we will take only those elements which occur at the first and the second position and will ignore the element which occur at the third position. So it will represent the subset A, B. Since the array ABC has three elements, so the number of subsets will be 2 key power n that is 2 key power cube is equal to 8. Now let us write all the subsets in the above mentioned binary representation and the binary numbers in the decimal representation. For example 0 0 0 since none of the bit is 1 so it will represent the subset which has no element that is 5 subset or the empty set. The next will be 0 0 1 since the third element is 1 so we will take only the third element that is C and it will represent the decimal number 1. Now the decimal number 2 is represented by 0, 1, 0 and the second bit is set so we will take the second element of the array that is b. Now 3 will be denoted by 0, 1, 1 and the element of the array will be b, c. Similarly 1, 0, 0, similarly 1, 0, 1, similarly 1, 1, 0, similarly 1, 1, 1. Like in 1, 1, 1 all the bits are set so it will represent the subset which contains all the elements that will be a, comma b, comma c and the decimal representation will be 7. As you can see, using bit masking, we have got all the subsets of an array. Now let's come to the implementation part, that is how we will code it. We can iterate through all the numbers from 0 to 2 key power n minus 1 and check which bits are set in the number in its binary form. That is, we will iterate through all the numbers from 0 to 2 key power n minus 1 and we will write the binary representation of that number and the bits which are set we will include only those elements of that array. If a bit is set, that is if a bit is 1, we include the element of that array at that position in our present subset. So here's the pseudocode to print all the subsets of an array, say ARR of size n. For int mask is equal to 0, mask less than equal to power 2 comma n minus 1 mask plus plus. Pow is a function in C++ which take two arguments like here 2 comma n and it is represented as 2 key power n. So let us understand this code by taking an example. So let us understand the implementation part with the help of an example. Here I have taken an array A 
and the contents of the array A is 1, 2, 3. I have iterated through a loop named int mass and by taking a particular number, let's say 3, I have iterated with that number through all the elements of an array. What I have done in the if condition is that I have used a left shift operator in it. So we will left shift 1 by the value of i and we will take and operator with mask and the bits which are set in both mask and that left shift operator will be returned and we will convert that binary number into the decimal representation and we will print the number which occurs at the position that is represented by that binary representation of that number. In this way we will get all the subsets of that array. The output of this code is as you can see here 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it lists out all the subsets of that array. As you can see in number there are 8 subsets. So the output of this code as you can see is all the subsets of that array. In this way bit masking is used to iterate through all the subsets of an array. The time complexity of this method is O 2 p power n into n. As you can see I have used two loops. The outer loop is 2 key power n and the inner loop is n. So the, this code will iterate through 2 key power n into n and that's the time complexity of this method. As you can see the first loop iterates through 0, 2 key power n minus 1 and the second loop runs for n time. I hope you have understood the basic concept behind bit masking and for nurturing further here are some questions for practice that you can practice later on. So the last topic that I will be going to discuss today is permutations. Suppose you want to iterate through every possible permutation of the first n numbers. Then in C++ it is a simple task to do through functions known as next permutation and previous permutation. The next underscore permutation function is used to find the next lexicographically greater value for any given array of values. So what do you mean by lexicographically greater value? For example, the next permutation of 1, 2, 3 is 1, 3, 2. As you can see, how can we prove that the lexicographically greater value of 1, 2, 3 is 1, 3, 2? So basically what we will do is iterate one by one from left to right and we will iterate as long as the element in both the numbers is same and we will stop at the first difference of those elements and the element which is greater will be the lexicographically greater value. As you can see 1 and 1 is same. So the first difference came at 2 and 3. Since 3 is greater than 2, so the lexicographically greater value of 1, 2, 3 will be 1, 3, 2. Similarly, the next permutation of 4, 6, 8 will be 4, 8, 6. So it is to be noted that the function could be rearranged as a lexicographically greater permutation. Otherwise, the function will return false and will do nothing. And similarly, the previous permutation is used to find the previously lexicographically smaller value for a given array of values. For example, the previous permutation of 3 to 1 is 3, 1, 2. Applying the same approach, we will iterate from left to right. As 3 and 3 is same, so the first difference came at 2 and 1. And since 1 is less than 2, so the lexicographically smaller value of 3 to 1 is 3, 1, 2. Similarly, the previous permutation of 864 is 846. So let us understand this with the help of an example. Here I have taken an array B which contains the elements 1, 2, 3. We will print all the permutations of this array. The next underscore permutation function is implemented with the help of a do while loop as you can see. It will run as long as a lexicographically greater value of that permutation exists. So now I will print the output of this code. As you can see in the output, all the permutation that is 3 factorial that will be 6, all the 6 permutations of that array is printed in the output here. Now I will prove that the next underscore permutation function will print only the lexicographically greater value of the permutation. Here I have taken an array which contains 5 elements and the lexicographically largest value of the permutation of the 5 elements. So what I expect is that the next underscore permutation function will print only this permutation and no other permutation since any permutation is lexicographically smaller than this permutation. So now I will print the output of this array function and here as you can see only one permutation that is the actual permutation which I have taken in the form of input is printed since there is no permutation of this array which is lexicographically greater than 54321. So the questions for practice for next permutation and previous permutation are also attached here. So I hope that this video will help you understand the basic concept behind these three that is bitwise operators, bit masking and permuting. The link to the doc and the questions for practice is attached in the description below. So if you do like the video, 
please hit the like button and do subscribe our channel.